Okay, for this video, I'm going to show you how to build an overflow. So I've already, um, due to space constraints, I'm not. A, I would have drilled the bottom and just built the overflow around that. But instead, I built drilled the side. I'm going to build an overflow that will come out and uh, be in this corner. So I just had some quarter inch acrylic. If I had black, I would have done black just because it looks a lot nicer. But um, due to this particular project, clear was fine. So the way I cut it to size is I place it on the bottom and I drew a line where the, the, there is the plastic lip. And then I cut it like a half inch shorter than that so that with this end, I can put it in and it fits flush. So at this point, I'm going to use my trim router and make the little notches on the top of the overflow. So I've already set it to a height what I think it would be good. I'm going to check it once when I've done, but for, I'm using a really small bit just because I want narrow cuts and I'd be fine with wider spacing just because this is going to be housing a cuttlefish young. So just to get started. <laughs> side um, you want to make sure you don't take off the paper before you do this and then I got nice little teeth it's not as nice as professionally done but they also have better tools I'm just if I had a router table and I could probably get this a lot nicer but if I just want an overflow this works pretty good and it actually turns out um, usually pretty nice So now I'm just gonna do this bigger panel, same way.
So that's done. Just did a few teeth on that side. So that's gonna go in this way. So I'm gonna just trim the very bottom over here off. The reason I did that was to make room for the silicone that's down there, so I don't have to worry about cutting it or anything. Okay, and then same thing on this one. And if I overcut it, it's not a big deal. I'll just fill that in with silicone. Okay, so now I gotta glue these together. So, I'm gonna go grab my clamp. So, I want this, it's like the neighbor kid fell on their bike. Uh, I think her mom's right there. So, I'm going to just glue it. So, I got to think about where my edges are. So, there and there is how I want to glue this. So, I'm going to peel back the paper at this point. And I don't need to peel it all the way off at this point. Um, I just want to get at least a good amount off. So there could be, um, the paper doesn't get stuck underneath the acrylic glue. And do this to both sides. So this acrylic I just got scrap from a local acrylic manufacturer. So I only paid, I think it was like two dollars a pound or something. Might have been more than that, I don't remember. But I paid by the pound. And I just got some nice uh, quarter inch thick stuff that I've just had lying around. So this looks like it's actually frosted on the one side, so that's kind of nice. If I knew I was going to be making this when I got the stuff, I would have looked to see if they had any colored stuff. But since I already have the acrylic, I'm fine with it just being white and frosted. So same on the other panel. small enough that it's easier just to take the whole thing off. Okay, 
So it's gonna be like this. And I think I want it to be as wide as possible, not as deep as possible. And that's where this fun Harbor Freight clamp comes in. Allows me to make sure I get a nice 90 degree angle between the two. First, I'll go ahead and get the bottom nice and tight. These are just Harbor Freight made in China things, but for this, they work amazing because they have a nice gap so I can still get my glue under it. So I want to get it nice and lined up. Most important spots are going to be the bottom and the side. The bottom for obvious reasons the side so it looks nice. Okay, looks like I need to go grab one more for the top. So I'm gonna grab one more for the top end and then I'm gonna glue this together. Okay, so I got my other clamp, put it together, got it on a wood bench because I don't want to risk the acrylic solvent um, going everywhere, uh, especially over a plastic thing because what it does is it actually dissolves the material. So I'm making sure it's all clean and touching, make sure the bottom is good and together. And then I'm using Weld on 3. I have a large supply from uh, my sump that I built. So I'm just going to squirt that in the groove from both sides and leave it for a good few hours. And that should be good. Um, usually, if it was a larger project, I would do the needle, the pin method, and have a bunch of pins but because it's such a small piece and it doesn't really have to be that watertight um, I'm just gonna do it this way so I'm just going along the edge doing a uniform amount and watching it fill in the gap and it looks really nice and then I'm gonna just do it from the outside just to be safe Right along the gap. And that's all there is to it. Just looking for anywhere that might need a little bit more. So now I'm just going to wait and then I will install it probably later today um, based on how much acrylic and how big of a thing it is depends on how you want it how long you want it to dry usually I'll let things go overnight but because there's not really gonna be any stresses on it and I'm not gonna be filling up with water I'm just gonna wait for probably this evening to install it into the tank okay it's been a few hours um, and the seal looks pretty good so I'm now going to install this into the tank. So once again, just using some clear silicone, um, you want to make sure it's aquarium safe. And I like a nice thick bead just to make it nice and solid connection. Okay. so. Well, I'm just going to start on the back, I'm doing the outside first, so I want to make sure you get a nice smooth bead.
Okay, so the outside ring is done. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the inside. Looks like I'm going to have just enough. Okay, there we go. It's all sealed up. Looks good. And let's get it zoomed in. So you can see the, the seal. So just, you can see the silicone on both sides of the acrylic, and it just looks to be completely uh, adhering. So, so, now I just have to wait for it to cure. Um, you might be wondering why I drilled my hole so low. Um, my thought is going to put the bulkhead in and then a right angle um, to be able to, for the overflow unit. Um, and then have the top be closer to the top, but that way I can simulate the effects of it being lower and I can also um, have a, make it so that there's a spot for air to drain. So that's that. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'm going to keep on making these videos.